On today's Fun with Straps, we're going to uh, look at the Omega Seamaster. In this case, it's the um, GMT, the first generation coaxial. It's got an ETA movement in it that has been modified with the Daniels coaxial uh, movement. Just so, even though this isn't uh, an episode about the watch, you see it has a display back because they were so proud of it. Uh, but yes, most Seamasters will look like this. This is, I mean, most Seamasters with the aluminum bezel. So uh, your watch will look similar to what we have here. Uh, if you have a ceramic bezel, you might have a different impression. But in general, um, I advocate changing straps on your watch and enjoying the ability to change straps because as i've said many times if you have a watch and you have a bunch of straps you have a bunch of watches so let's uh first look at it on the factory five link metal bracelet very nice presentation uh non-tapering uh not really any of a micro adjustment in this version it's got the uh diver deployant and uh, there you go on the wrist very nice watch really good looking piece now uh let's put this on um a black leather strap so i put it on the black this is the uh, factory omega I normally wear it on my uh, Speedmaster, but I just thought um, show you what it looks like on a black strap because even though it's a blue watch, it can go on other color leather. Uh, now, I mean, when you uh, have a blue leather strap, it could look something like this. So on a uh, blue leather strap, you know, one that can really bring out the blue in the watch, it really does look uh, nice. Again, um, not something you would put on the watch every day, but having different straps really gives you a chance to uh, explore what the watch can look like in different uh, environments and circumstances. Let's uh, put it on one of those NATOs. Red, white, and blue isn't just for uh, Independence or Bastille Day. Um, you know, a color combination like that can really bring out the... Uh, Red for the highlights in the dial, the white for the indices, and the blue for the face and bezel. Comes out looking sharp, in my opinion. Let's try it on something else. Here it is on a Bond NATO, uh, Bark and Jack specifically. Um, I must admit, I don't remember what the uh, blue one here is, but uh, this one, uh, I like the, it has a very silky uh, feel on the strap. It's a nice strap for uh, a sports watch. And uh, on the uh, NATO, I think the Seamaster looks sharp. Let's put it on the blue one. So on uh, this, you got a little bit of black, you got a little bit of blue. It brings out the colors. It looks sharp. Um, yeah, it really is a good way to um, spice up your watch routine by changing straps, you know? That looks good on it. Uh, last but not least, let's uh, put it on an interesting variant, uh, the rubber strap that's actually made for the Aquaterra. So here it is with the uh, rubber strap. I really think it looks very, very good on the rubber. Um, and uh, worth giving it a shot. It doesn't quite line up with the holes. Uh, like the Aquaterra, uh, I had to actually put curved spring bars into this to get it to fit. But I got it to fit, and it looks really sharp. So, that's what you do when you have uh, a lot of straps and a watch. You have a lot of fun with it. And I hope you guys and gals got something out of this episode. Thanks.